every door in Fallout New Vegas goes to a specific predefined location. If you open a door in a building in Cottonwood Cove, you don't expect to end up at a casino on the strip. So what would happen if every door throughout the entire game went somewhere completely unpredictable? Can you beat Fallout New Vegas if every door is randomized? Rooms and world spaces in Fallout New Vegas are officially called cells. The entire Mojave Wasteland as a world space is a cell, but so are all the individual locations within it. Doc Mitchell's house, the Hoover Dam offices, the Leggett's camp, the Boulder Dome, the vaults, Zion Canyon, Mr. House's penthouse, the narrator's room, all of it. You can think of a cell as what exists on the other side of a door with a loading screen. Normally, you'd walk up to a door, press a button to open it, and you travel to the location displayed next to your crosshair. From the outside, activating the Prospector Saloon door loads you into the saloon. There's a connection between the door and where you're placed after the brief loading screen. What I've gone and done is found a mod that f***s with that connection. Doors no longer send you to their normal predetermined destination. A couple do, I think I found three safety doors, just to keep the universe from becoming completely unplayable. I've dreamed of this challenge for such a long time. What I've failed to mention is the door randomizer will not be the only randomizer at play here. My original idea for this challenge was the cabin in the woods, the scene down in the basement with all the cells and the monsters wreaking havoc, causing cavities, all that shit. As neat and as fascinating as it would be to have all the connections between your senses severed, it's just not enough. I want to smell with my skin and taste with my retinas. To that end, I activated the original, tried and true, classic, barely a year old Fallout New Vegas randomizer mod as well. The world randomizer deals with the big picture stuff. The frame, the framework, the glass covering up the sky, while the other randomizer messes with just about everything else. Weather effects are randomized. NPCs can spawn with any combination of weapons and armor, and any creature that isn't a person is randomized too. Every single room is an Omnicron fever dream of possibilities. I've got one more surprise in store, but I'll save that bombshell for later. The curtains have been drawn back. That's my cue to be born. Doc Mitchell asked me what my name was, and I immediately started up the mind games by naming myself Doc Mitchell. I've always wanted to say someone else's name back at them when introducing myself, I just don't have the moxie to pull it off. Special and skills are randomized right off the bat, no need to mess with them. Wouldn't know what I was doing anyway. Skills are in the same boat. I let Jesus take the stick, starting off with science feels wrong. Wild Wasteland is a must, and I did a quick smash and grab in the doctor's office before setting off for destination imagination. Containers and lootable objects have all their items randomized too. Some do still stick to their theme. Medical crates have usual medical supplies like forceps and a bloody sausage. Ammo boxes will have some of their lead copper doohickeys. You get the idea. The door to Good Springs is one of the few doors left untouched by the world randomizer. Outside, the Fallout 3 colors have invaded the West. Victor's a Brahmin. My fourth grade teacher is as lovely as ever, and the first mystery door is here. There was a choice at the beginning of the game. Leave door names intact, or let them be a mystery. Before we do this, I just need to point out that I'm gonna do my honest-to-gosh best, but this is gonna be kind of tough to follow. Okay? Okay. The door to Chet's shop spit me out in Nipton, where I ran into Oliver Swanick, whose head doesn't anymore, and the crucified profligates left to suffer in the sun. The Legion, those heartless heathens, killed a little boy on his birthday, then crucified the ghost. It's smart. You never hear about a ghost being tortured. A house led me to a brotherhood safe house. Got some good stuff down there. The door to another house opened a portal to Nelson. More sad tea poses in town. This is no place for me. I went back to Nipton and jumped into Old World Blues by way of the Z9 Crotalus DNA Preservation Lab. Creatures of all shapes, makes, and models were down there being tested. Back, uh, somewhere, I took a turn and ended up at Camp McCarran. Not anticipating gambling, I baited the fiends into attacking NCR soldiers who didn't get the memo that this was a costume party. It's alright, I thought this was a work function too. By now, it hadn't dawned on me how f***ed up this would become. I assumed taking an NCR jumpsuit would help me. There are like three doors in between Camp McCarran and the Strip. Might as well be asking me to play Russian Roulette with a shotgun. Better hope it jams. A door led me to the Big Empty, where they had a working monorail, and a tower that leads to the Sierra Madre. I told you this was a work thing. I don't need no extra collar to make my skull into an art piece on the ceiling. It is weird that I blew up in dead money without a collar on. I found a couple beds in Little Yahtzee, sealed off by radiation. I entered a cave, did an accident with a tripwire and a grenade. One blew me up, my body landed on another trap, 
that one detonated and it killed me. Not a fun place to be. Unlike usual playthroughs, I'm about to get ahead of myself. I played on normal. Please congratulate me in the comments for my bravery. Unlike normal, I was big into this challenge. I used many quick saves, but I didn't make a ton of manual saves. I didn't want to be reloading no saves when the going gets tough. When the going gets tough, the tough get going in the opposite direction. You can always run through the door you came from. On the topic of broad challenge spanning topics, let's talk strategy. There isn't one in the traditional sense. Doors don't change locations after you go through them. They're randomly generated with a seed that can only be changed from outside the game by editing a text file. So you go through the doors, start learning where they go. Maybe you find a shortcut, maybe you find a pathway to the lonesome road in a Novak motel. Regardless of what you find, you'll have a completely unique pathway to navigate through New Vegas, held together by the glue of the overworld. I don't want to startle you, I haven't checked the compatibilities, you know the legendary effects from Fallout 4? There's a New Vegas mod for that. Add a permadeath and that mod onto these, and you've got something worth looking into. We were talking strategy and I got lost. Beating the game is the end goal. Given every door is random, the first step is exploring as many doors as possible to figure out which doors lead to locations you'll need to visit. When your objective is to talk to Mr. House in the Lucky 38, how do you plan on doing that when the door to the Lucky 38 doesn't send you into the Lucky 38 casino? You'd better pray to R and Jesus for the odds to be in your favor. My story continued until it ground to a halt inside the Bright Brotherhood den. In their presence, I found myself in awe of their digital style and wanted to take it for myself. Despite all the strange characters I've killed so far, all the random items I've found, my supplies are still shockingly limited. Had it not been for the danger grenades I've found, I'm not sure the bright followers would have been wiped out. A side effect of random NPC heights is exponentially increased durability. Ever wonder why super mutants are so tough? It's a size thing. Damage resistance seems to scale with height. A couple extra inches gives anyone an advantage. One of the bodies was wearing Dean's holographic outfit from Dead Money. This is objectively the best armor in the game, not in terms of damage resistance or stat boosts. It makes your hands invisible in first person. Any weapon floats in midair. Guns take on a mind of their own, proving it's not a people problem, it's a gun problem. We're gonna have to kill the guns. And who better to aid in our fight than the boys in silly outfits guarding Hoover Dam? It sure does look different in the dead of night. The dam led me to Higgs Village, to a vault, and a sentry bot hooked on bathwater. In that vault, I found a hat named Slickback and was back on the right track, headed to the strip, ideally via Freeside. In my haste, I'd forgotten the gate counts as a door, and now the gate to Freeside opens to a waste disposal station currently being used as a house by a pregnant ant queen. The door to North Vegas Square just f the late game by coming out of the old Dorito substation. There is one way into that room, and it's been destroyed. Me getting into that station in the future is now left up to chance. I hate to break it to you, Homeward Bound came out in 93. Things aren't looking good for chance. After a quick trip to the Mosquite Mountain Crater, I opened what I prayed would be the door to the North Vegas Medical Clinic. What I got was my old buddy, the Elevator Room, from Lonesome Road. I've been stuck here before. Those instances didn't spawn me on the tracks. The elevator's not running, so I have the opportunity to run down the tracks myself until I hit that there invisible wall. I went back up the ramp and used my super jump to hop around the elevator, hoping to land on the platform above. With no way down, that door is my only way out. And where did it spit me? The bunker entrance to dead money, leaving me with quite literally no choice but to willingly activate the trap, get gassed, rigged with an explosive collar, and told to get to work. And all my stuff's gone, all but the DLC items and the problem solver. This tool loads you back through the previous door as a failsafe. So stupid, so lame, also completely worthless given my situation. I went back to dead money to find a proper way out. Storm lightened up a bit, easier to see around the world take in the sights and smells of the red waste. I spent longer here than I planned to. Finding a door that wasn't locked took 20 minutes. My jumping around outside the environment is most likely what kept the beeping collar from going off. When I have one, I'm fine. When I don't, I explode. What is this mod? At level four, I noticed the perks are all random and slightly modular, modulated up by the mod, I guess. I didn't take them because I didn't want to compromise the integrity of this run. Also, the way out through that station was locked. Over time, with a solid majority of my limbs intact, I found a way out through the chairman's pool area. I went in the pool fully in cloth with all my clothes on, picked a great day to step in dog shit, 
and was finally back in the Mojave. I thought for a second after the Gunrunners connected me to the guts of Hoover Dam that I could enter the Leggett's camp early. However, I discovered a direct connection between the dam and Cottonwood Cove. I have great plans for that, but I put them on hold to settle an age-old debate. Who has the nicer bathroom, girls or boys? Up first, the ladies had a warm fire, snacks, nice seating arrangements. The boys' bathroom is Boomer's headquarters. Oddly enough, that might have been Pearl's cabin I came out of. So one door in Cottonwood Cove leads to Hoover Dam, and by sheer f***ing happenstance, the door next door goes to the top's casino floor. And see our soldiers are at the casino, shitting away their shillings. Some of them wandered through the door, right into enemy territory just like I did. I'm naked, rigged to explode, holding a cop's gun waiting to kill a guy, but I'm not a f***ing animal. As for dealing with Benny and his comrades, well, let's just say I didn't have a whole lot of confidence in me. I figured my best bet was to vats a headshot on each of them for assured damage, run away, and hope they perish in the ensuing chaos. I tried that one time before retreating in search of better gear. I found none, but I had me an idea. Legion are on the other side of those doors. We've already seen people pass through. The plan is foolproof. Piss off the chairman and lure them through the portal to Legion territory where they'll be chopped into bite-sized pieces. Alternatively, at least kill Benny and get the chip and make it to Legion land safe and sound. I refused to put on armor. I couldn't survive in that shooting gallery with no armor or stim packs. The plan worked like a charm. The chairman followed me across the wasteland. The big man didn't need guns. I went for the knees just like I said I would. It worked. I survived and checked out a few of the other doors in the casino to see where they lead. One goes to the inside of a cabin. That's neat. Another goes to the inside of a different cabin. That's neat. One's locked, and the other goes back to everyone's favorite misty hell, the Sierra Madre Casino. A door there placed me in Big Empty, where conveniently Father Elijah's laser rifle was waiting to give me the upper hand against the chairman. After using one of my last remaining healing items, Benny and I engaged in the final battle to decide the fate of the entire universe, and my game crashed. You're lucky I'm the one doing this. My iMac was purpose-built to handle this kind of workload. Your NVIDIA sh** just doesn't cut it anymore. They called it a GPU because it stinks. Unable to win that fight, I went back and forth between areas in quick succession to mess with their AI and prevent them from coming through the door. In the camp the tower guarded, I picked fights I could win by antagonizing Yangtze camp survivors, then hiding behind a couple picnic tables where they couldn't attack me. In the aftermath, I looted the camp for supplies and quickly realized what was so special about this place. Why it was secluded in a dome in Nevada. They were keeping my dress here. I wasn't ready to wear it. I had to eliminate Benny first. Every time I failed, I emerged from the darkness ready to try again. He f***ed up. His hand slipped off the gun. I had my moment. I struck that motherfucker dead, grabbed the chip, evaded the onslaught of the chairman, and escaped to Cottonwood Cove where I jumped up to the roof out of anyone's line of sight, enabled the free cam, and watched as a war broke out amongst the factions. It never broke out. The chairman lost interest in finding me. I swam a safe distance away, disengaged my jaw, and gulped water until the sky turned a funny shade of pink. The age-old questions here again. How the effing f*** do I get to the main story? According to the quest log and the map, I can get to Benny's room by following this exact path. Naturally, I jumped right to the end, near the final waypoint in Novak. Met Boone, who has nowhere to go during the night, so he just stands there waiting for his next shift. Got some vibes that I couldn't quite place in this town. I didn't like that one bit. Thank God I'm easily distracted. I may not have any conceivable way to make any more progress in the main story, but I do have this. All I could do was wander around, opening any door I could find, hoping for Mr. House's penthouse, a level in the Brotherhood's bunker, Benny's room, the El Dorado substation, the Legates camp, or an assortment of others. A friend of Frank Horrigan's took a job at the secluded ranger station in Jacobstown Forest. Jacobstown is near Red Rock Canyon, in theory. It's close, but there are invisible walls, preventing those of us with good legs from reaching their full potential. I backtracked to Good Springs to take a trip through the art exhibit formerly known as Cazador Canyon. Robots blasted me from afar not long after I approached. The next time around, I took out one of their group members from a distance at random and retreated to the hills. I don't have the quest to meet the Red Rockers yet. I spoke to Regis anyway. The Khans are one of the factions you can satisfy with a single interaction. That's done, maybe. Next stop, Paul needs food, badly, and ammo, and a jumpsuit that didn't belong to a dead kid. More importantly, I need the locations I mentioned. Crimson Caravan offered up several doors to explore. I can't stress enough how thrilling and futile this challenge felt. All the necessary locations are out of reach. When I hit the Great Wall of Inevitability, my brain resorted to primal tactics. 
get inside Hidden Valley. I know the door to the bunker won't go to the bunker. For the life of me and all these powder gangers, I couldn't think of a better idea. For all the hours I've put into New Vegas, I drew a complete blank at how to beat the game. It's okay, don't panic just yet. I've got my invisible hands back in the form of a slutty hologram outfit. Everything is gonna be okay. There's a giant alpha mother death claw lurking at Hidden Valley. Everything is not gonna be okay. I picked her babies off first. Hollow points pack the most punch, and overkill sends a message that you need a hearing aid. Switching to your sidearm is always faster than reloading. I hit that death claw with 15, 20, maybe 25 308 hollow points, and that sick f had half its health left. I threw time bombs in its general direction, I singed its skin off with a laser gun, I discovered Hidden Valley, and hightailed it out of there. My long lost brother Tromp Lewis was sporting a fantastic smile, Snuffles disappointed us all, and on my way to 188 Trading Post to abduct a friend, I was ambushed by a powder ganger hit squad. I freaked, ran off into a cave. The garbanzos followed me directly into a blind death claws den. It cried out in Morse code as it died. Sadly, I couldn't understand any of it. Upped my hat game, a mantis's claw fell into my arm. A dead body awarded me an alien blaster. A nightkin set a new home run derby world record with Clifford's most prized possession. Of course, when I kill Clifford and take it, it turns into an advertisement. Veronica at 188 Trading Post was my next destination. This prospector had the audacity to be roaming the wasteland in her birthday suit. To teach her a lesson, I chopped her up. You wear clothes when you go outside. With two sleeping bags worth upwards of 4,400 caps each, I stocked up on ammo from Alexander below 188. Met an angel, took her wings for myself, gave her a mask in return, and returned to the hidden bunker knowing I would not get inside. Unbeknownst to me, disaster was about to strike. A bug reared its ugly head, back from the dead to ruin everything. Both NPC and door name tags are broken. They don't show up. I have no way of knowing where a door goes until I go through it. Some of you might think this would improve the challenge. I felt it did more harm than good. I don't remember where anything is, and I wouldn't expect you to be able to remember it either. At the very least, I needed a way to know which doors I've already gone through. I don't have that anymore. Plus the NPCs. I can't tell who anyone is unless I talk to them or use vats to scan them or, as a hideous third choice, open fire to turn them hostile and get their health bar to pop up. I've made... no progress since Benny died? Let's correct that by going to NAFB. I'll have to meet certain factions to finish the story, and a handful of NPCs can be caught outside in the wilderness as a part of their existence loop. Meet Pearl as she's walking to her house, pass a 20 speech check, and the boomers are finished. Unsure of which cabin was hers, I climbed up to the roof and observed silently from above, waiting for Pearl to show herself. Her house is here, what's inside is anyone's guess, which means Pearl could be on the strip dancing in a fountain, losing her marbles as she becomes a lobotomite in the Great Khan's camp. There's no way to know where she is. Doors don't go where they're supposed to. NPCs are trained to open those doors and go through them regardless of where they lead. Pearl is a lost cause. The midget freak put the fear of God in me. A war against the boomers didn't feel like a winnable campaign. You know who loves war? More than a 15 year old on Discord, the Brotherhood of Steel. A door here leads to their bunker. Initiates couldn't be here otherwise. I began my search. Shack 1 is where Raoul's being locked up. Shack 2 is a second pathway to the chairman's pool room. I'd have been annoyed had it not been for the rotisserie style saw bladed power fist. Only those who escaped survived my massacre at the pool. Among the victims were NCR soldiers. They were among the survivors as well. Word spreads fast. The troopers on the dam attacked me for what I'd done to their brothers with arms. In return, I cut their king's head off with a blade and returned to my dusty roots in Good Springs. Sunny Smiles agreed to meet me around the back of the saloon for shooting advice. She'll get there eventually. I picked the lock on the saloon door and entered a brotherhood bunker. Couldn't say which one. Post-processing graphics enhancing software froze the tape, letting me inspect a window I made with my face when I attempted to clip through the door by quick saving. I see crates. Lots of crates. My god, that's a lot of crates. Whether this is or isn't the correct bunker is tough to say. The Brotherhood have, like, four bunkers. One bunker is filled with debris. I saw through the door that there's crates in here, and the room I'm in is empty. Can't be in that bunker. Another bunker's an NCR Ranger hideout. It's not that one. Then there's the real bunker, and maybe this one. I didn't check the map to see. Veronica's unwillingness to come to my aid for any reason, in any video, ensured Brotherhood hostility should I succeed in clipping through the door. Here's the twist. The door I need to go through to get to the real bunker is the door I came in through. See, that's the beauty of playing in the four-dimensional funhouse. You lose track of basic common sense. You run into a crowded room with a sword, start avenging your wife, and predictably die. 
The bouncers will be so mad, they disrespect your body. Yes, I'm still wearing the hologram outfit instead of armor. If I've told you twice, I've told you once. Fashion over function. Always and forever. Why do you think I chose this character preset before I was born? I'm being efficient. Sooner or later, I showed up in Gamora's underbelly. Eliminated Troik to upset the Omertas. A tunnel snake did a dance. And my quest to leave the casino began. Lord have mercy, yes he does, but don't believe the hype. It's not what it's cracked up to be. By virtue of the way grenades work, the gamblers joined Angel and the Omertas in hating me. Veronica served no purpose other than being a distraction. After one of the thugs dropped Annabelle on her barrel, I hoisted her up with my invisible hands and high explosive missiled the living beings in the next room. A certain someone we won't talk about wasn't pleased with my actions in the casino. A cloud of darkness latched itself onto me and followed me until the end of my days, which in a shocking turn of events would come sooner rather than later. Knowing this, I was offered up a gift for both eyes. My left, the analytical side, a dancing skeleton. For all the righties out there, for all the people who lost the use of their hands in a farm accident, Todd, this one's for you, buddy. I left the twins to dance forever. The delicate balance between fact and fiction must be maintained at all times. I get the kids Murray the Mole Man mask, though. Outside, my sense of sense started to malfunction. I couldn't see right. I tried to enter the Lucky 38. It led to an NCR outpost, and I waited the weather away. The dark is so drab and dreary, hard to make out what's going on in a this video sucks, I can't see what he's doing kind of way. I assume you complimented my bravery earlier like I suggested you do, so thank you. Those messages kept me going in my moment of despair. Several areas of New Vegas became virtually pitch black. Waiting changed the weather, but it wasn't bright enough. Speeding up time with a console command ran through a couple weather effects, yet the darkness remained. My legs barely remained intact, following a powder ganger squadron assault squadron. I'm at full health, my legs are completely numb, rigged up by sticks and twine. Veronica's behind me operating me like a puppet. Possible flash warning now for about 10 seconds. I played God with the console one more time to quickly check a ton of weathers. All in the dark. Warning over. I'll give old Paul some credit for one thing. He figured out why the sneak meter gone and run away. I called the old boy back home. Novak wasn't safe from the shadow over the Mojave. The lonesome road wasn't safe. My pit boy lights are on. The torches are lit, the fireplace is burning bright, and I can't see the end of my gun in the Great Khan hideout. A cat's eye provided temporary relief. It wore off, and the haze over the Mojave had stretched to every corner of the map. A location not outside indirect sunlight is shrouded in the deepest dark, impenetrable by vault tech technology. Outside doesn't really get any better. Maybe it's bad luck. Maybe it's mods gone wrong. Maybe it's a random coincidence that I happen to get stuck with for this challenge. Something changed mid-game that was out of my hands. Can you beat Fallout New Vegas if every door is randomized? Sure, but I've been told to do a challenge for fun. This is what that looks like. Now let's all agree to never let me do it again. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Thanks to the Champion Tier supporters as well as other channel members for making videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server by going to mitten.land. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.